Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the We Knives Curvaceous, brand new for 2022. Uh, by the time you're watching this, this is either available or it is coming soon. In any case, I will link it right down in the description so you can check it out if you want to. Uh, the gentleman behind this knife is none other than Eric Oaks, uh, who's the same person that brought us the, the same person who brought us the uh, Osprey. EDX. Uh, this knife is obviously a wild departure from that knife. Very interesting, definitely quite a bit different from what we've been seeing from Wii here lately, which is uh, honestly, I kind of, you know, kind of into that. We're going to talk all about it. Thanks so much to Wii for sending this knife in for me to take a look at. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right, let's go ahead and get a measurement. This is not a small knife. Not a huge knife, but not a small knife. We're coming in at about 8.7, maybe not quite 8.75. Blade length is coming in at about 3.75, and your cutting edge is also, yeah, about 3.75. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2? So you can see here, this is definitely a knife on the larger side. How about uh, up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? And uh, yeah, once again, a little bit bigger than the PM2, definitely bigger than the Para 3. Last but not least, the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue, and the Benchmade Bugout. And once again, the Curvaceous, properly named, is bigger than both. How's the action? It's pretty good. About what you'd expect from Wii. Um, the blade feels a lot heavier, um, which is assisting it in the, you know, the feeling of action department. There's a lot of bam when you flip it out. Um, as far as, you know, going back in, it's plenty smooth. I think it's being assisted a little bit by the mass of the blade. This will undoubtedly get fall shut over time, um, but very smooth and very consistent. It's, you know, pretty much what you'd expect from Wii. Let's go ahead and uh, do thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It is... Not really all that much. It's a little bit, not a lot. It's a little thicker. Uh, length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Because of the, you know, curvaceousness of this knife, it is going to be quite a bit in the pocket. Uh, I would say it's going to feel a little bit more, a little bit more pocket hoggy than, than even the PM2 with, you know, the height between the flipper tab peak and the top of the blade nearing the PM2. And then you also have this area down here. Um, but, you know, if you're used to carrying the PM2, it may not be that much different dimensionally. Now, when it comes to weight, by the way, we're looking at, I don't know if they actually printed the, oh, they did. It's just really, really small. You can see there, CPM 20 CV. Then we're looking at titanium and micarta, uh, and then some more titanium. So probably not a lightweight knife. It's definitely going to weigh more than the PM2, absolutely, at 5.26 ounces. So, it's not too big for me. It's a little longer than I like to normally carry. The weight is not too much weight for me, but it's definitely going to be for some people. Just do with that information what you will. We're all different. We all have different preferences. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. Got my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I think I have these out of order. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, the both the pivot and scale sh screws and po actually everything. This is a Wii knife, so everything is going to be T8. Yep. How about the pocket clip? Yep. How about the steel lock bar insert screw? Yep. It's all T8. That's something that I you know, appreciate with Wii and Civivi. They, uh, everything's T8. Pretty good, right? Blade stock thickness. Let's go ahead and check that here real quick. Uh, blade stock thickness, I'm going to guess 140. Nope, more than that. 150,000. So let's do it again just to be sure. Yeah. Yeah, 150,000. So okay, there you go. This is a pretty big boy. So, this is a lot different. I, I, I've seen a lot of the same stuff, not just from Wii, but it's just here lately in the knife world. Um, 
there's just no, it's either, everything just has this incredibly minimalist look where it has like a typical knife profile. And it, and that looks good. Like I have a lot of knives in my own personal collection that are like that, but it's very like, there's not a lot going on here. The blade is straight. The blade is, it is a proper blade with a proper grind and it is prepared to slice efficiently. And that's good. Like that's what we want our knives to do. But sometimes I want a little bit, I want a little bit of weirdness in there. I want a little bit different. I don't want it to be crazy, right? I don't need it to look like, you know, Optimus Prime's arm or something like that. What's that uh, brand that does that, that you'll never see on this channel? Quartermaster. Oh, holy God. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't need too much, but I like a little bit of character. I like a little bit of flair, right? Now, the nice thing is, is that ergonomically, this thing is freaking wonderful. It is very comfortable to hold. And it's because the thing is curvy in a good way. It does have a lock-in area back here. If you're going to, you know, there's not a lot of room to move around, especially if your hands are about the same size as mine. But this one area you're meant to hold the knife in is very comfortable thanks to the, um, it's not really contouring, it's just lots of chamfering, right? But the, the pocket clip is nice and rounded, heavy chamfering here, corners are knocked down, everything. This curviness in here is real, boy, yeah. It's real nice. This is a real comfortable blade. Disengaging the lock bar is plenty easy thanks to some, you know, a little bit of a lower cut here. Real nice, real smooth, no double clutch, good detent. It's real nice. The blade is a uh, compound Persian, yeah, a compound Persian style clip point. Can't say I've seen that before. Um, that's cool. So what we have, sorry, shaking the camera all over the place today, is a hollow grind here and then flat out here. Typically with a Persian grind, you have a very weak, like this all just tapers continuously, which it in some areas does, but you can see how much material is carried out to the tip. And then because this is flat ground out here, this area out here is actually quite thick. So plenty of strength if you're going to puncture, which this thing will do. But when you need to slice, it gets not insanely thin, but relatively thin down here. This is probably the strongest Persian clip point that I have seen, if I'm saying that correctly. I'm sure somebody will jump in and teach me, um, But uh, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of material. There's even a, there's a little sweat right here, but there's a flat carrying out like 95% the length of the blade. Um, no jimping up top, doesn't necessarily need it, but it's just cool. This uh, finish is a bead blast. It's just kind of an overcast look and it's nice and consistent. The edge is very glassy. It will slice, not as you know readily out here, but by the time you get out there, this part of the blade has already cut into the material, right? So this area doesn't necessarily need to be at, like, if you want to get in with this, you want to get into a thick piece of cardboard or rubber or something, that tip will do it. If you're going to slice, by the time it gets out here, you're already, you've already cleaved the material. So it's going to be, you're going to be fine, right? If you're, if you're buying a knife to shave wax paper with the sharpened edge of the blade near the tip, well, then this knife specifically will not do that job very well. Or if you are a professional grape shaver, right? Or grape surgeon, perhaps. Not the cutting tool that you should be using. They have a few different aesthetics. Uh, so we have black here, the black titanium, and then we have um, a sort of forest green micarta, which is nice. Maybe you'd call that OD green. It's kind of a forest green to me. They have, you know, gray and carbon fiber and at least one other thing. I think this looks good. Kind of a, you know, kind of a smoky grayish black with bronzed hardware and um, the green uh, micarta, I think it kind of looks good. It's obviously not going to be for everybody. Um, this knife does definitely feel like a big knife. You're not going to be mistaking it for a small. It doesn't like it's, oh, it's big, but it carries small. No, it feels big, it looks big, and it carries pretty big. It's not a monster knife, but you're definitely, if you are used to carrying a smaller knife, you are definitely going to notice this thing in your pocket. Back here, we've got a little uh, backspacer, which is also titanium. It's kind of nice, a little bit different. That's not flat, right? We have some just sort of chamfered edges and then a flat area right here looks good. These areas on the inside of this whole thing is the frame, it's all titanium, right? We have a little lanyard hole, fine. Kind of wish that it, they were always back here on the backspacer, but that's okay. Pocket clip is all 
just super goofball, kind of looks like some sort of eel, like a cartoon eel, and here are the eyes, and here are the tail, here's the tail, right? You're not going to be able to unsee that now, <laughs> sorry. But it does follow the lines of the knife, and it honestly looks, you know, the pocket clip is as curvaceous as the knife. Have we all seen the box? <laughs> so here's how the knife fits into the box. I'm sure you guys have seen this, right? That makes sense. There's a little area there for you to pull this knife out real quick. And that's, uh, you know, it's uh, understandable how they came to that uh, shape, right? <laughs> it's just, whoops. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I have to assume somebody somebody was having a laugh with that. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, and the pocket clip will actually slide nicely up over most thicknesses of pocket seam because uh, we have a continuous rise right there um, off the, uh, the edge of the bill. We're sitting on my card here. It's going to be even easier if it's titanium. Uh, stop pin is located right here. And it's robust enough. Um, there's no shouldering, but that's okay. It doesn't need it. Running on bearings, by the way. No blade play up, down, left, and right. That's pretty typical of Wii. No lock stick. No double clutch. No pivot lash. And a nice clicky detent. How are we on centering? Yeah. I believe that's uh, spot on there. So how much is it? Well, if you didn't know, Wii knives are made in China. Um, that's, uh, you know... Plenty of people, I'm sure, didn't watch this video because of that. Plenty of people watched it knowing that just to complain. I've... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to review these knives. I'm going to. But thank you for your, you know, you can let me know. There's the comment section down there. Um, but, uh, and, you know, everybody's dealing with inflation, right? What I'm used to seeing a Wii knife, right, we're looking at, some combination of titanium and then either G10, micarta, or carbon fiber. And then we are looking at 20 CV for the blade. And we are looking at usually not a 3D sculpted titanium pocket clip. In this case, we are. But it is not the materials alone that we judge. They play a, a role. But what plays a much larger role is how much work does it take? How much work goes into something like this to create it, right? To shape it the way that... It needs to be shaped. How much work is going into the blade, right? This blade undoubtedly is going to be a, a bit more complicated to make than something that has more of a standard profile with one continuous grind, right? There's more going on there. There's more going on with the clip. This is a nice Wii in the sense that there's just more going on with it. This is a more complicated knife to make and uh, a more costly knife to make. That being said, it's, it's pretty freaking expensive, right? How much is it? I think it's $290 to $295, perhaps even $299. I was hoping to see something like $250 or $260. Um, now, uh, you know, just judging the knife, it is a big, heavy, aggressive Persian clip point. It's cool. Not a ton out there. You don't see knives every day in the knife world that look just like this. It's kind of neat. Um, there are, you know, other knives that exist out there from all over that are substantially more practical and utilitarian for less money. I mean, that is always the case. It doesn't matter what we're looking at, right? So reasons to buy this knife, it's neat, but there are not a lot. This is not a knife that I'm going to say everybody jump up right now and go buy this thing. It's expensive, it's big, it's bulky, it's kind of weird, and the way that the blade is ground is not going to make it, you know, easier uh, to cut into day-to-day -day materials than pretty much, like, most practical knives out there, right? So, reasons to buy this if you just love how it looks. If you love how this looks, rest assured, it is made well. Uh, all the quality that you would want in a knife like this is there. That being said, even if that is the case, I think you're still overpaying a little bit. Uh, $30 to $40, something like that is about where I, where I feel like, you know, is, is going to be the case. But that's, it depends, right? If you really, really like this, if you just love how it looks, it will make a good tool. It's comfortable to hold. It's easy to manipulate, right? And that blade is going to be 
you know, useful, really useful in some specific situations. Um, for most people, though, I think there's just like way too many good choices at at 300 bucks. There's just way too many good choices out there. So it's cool. Um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not upset with this. I, I wish that we would do more stuff like this, little more character, not to the point where it's absolutely freaking crazy and all over the place and has a bunch of just weird crap all over it. Um, no, there's not a lot going on with this knife that seems unnecessary. It's just got a really interesting, um, shape, right? It's curvaceous. It's really cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, not something I'm just ready to recommend to everybody. Um, so still, still neat though. I'm, I'm happy to see we doing some different stuff with some different designers or that, you know, partnering up with designers who will do different things than just like the straight, like here's our next minimalist design, you know? So yeah, I, I thought this was a, a cool design and it was made, it's, it's obviously made very well. That's really all I have to say about it. Um, please make sure to, and like I said, you can pick this up. All right, right down in the description. I'll make sure it's linked down there. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives. They're either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.